Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll explain you a bit more about the Soval SVO4 IDX 3D printer. So I'll say it up front, this printer was sent to me for free in exchange for this review. Um, but I was not scripted in any way or paid by them to um, have to say anything about this printer. So this is my honest opinion and review. I'll go through the good, the bad and things that might be better on this printer. Um, and I'll just take you through the first specs of the printer. So it has a big build volume, 300 by 300 by 400. It has a dual direct drive uh, extruders meaning you can extrude two materials at the same time it has a big SD card which is easier with most computers it has a dual Z axis for better stability with separate stepper motors it has a magnetic bed um, to print on so you can just pop your parts off by flexing the plate then it has two run out sensors this was like a bit of a pain point for me for uh, this printer. I'll explain that about that later. It has uh, 16 point leveling uh, touch sensors. So you can read out uh, your measurements on the um, four by three inch LCD touch screen. It has various modes. The user interface is quite good. So you can print in four modes. So you can choose single mode. So the first nozzle or the second one, you can print in dual mode, meaning you can uh, do multiple colors, then you can copy and mirror parts. So the cool thing about this is uh, you can print in multiple colors, multiple materials. Um, so I'll explain you a bit more about that later on when I go through the separate modes uh, in this tutorial or video. So the printer is sent in a large box, it's well packed. Um, so the price for this printer at this time it's around just under 500 euros. So like it's, it's like the more regular things you get in a printer. So you get a USB cable, you get an SD card, um, like the manual, the manual is quite good. They also have a good amount of videos on the SD card to help you with the assembly fine-tuning and calibration of the printer and the assembly is quite easy as well so it's just everything is pre-assembled you just have to add the Z gantry on top of uh, the build plate and then you just have four screws so I did it in about 40 minutes um, while having to read the manual but if I sh would have done it again I think in about 25 to 30 minutes you can accept assemble this printer so the spool holders are added the runout sensors and then like you're basically ready to print so the touch screen is added so it's um lcd screen it's quite big i was like skeptical about the position being under an angle but i quite like it now so it's good to have like the um touch screen next to the printer in an angle so you attach all the cables so these are good cables and then you have two um, like scrapers and buckets to avoid oozing coming with the print head so while printing with two print heads one will be like positioned in a rest position and then just before going into the print it's like scraped off um, of the oozing so then final steps removing like the protective film and then everything is set to go so I'm just homing the printer right here and then I'm just watching a few videos about the calibration so it's quite well documented you can find these videos on YouTube as well on their YouTube channel there will be a link down below as well to their shop, so their Amazon web shop and their official website. So here I'm just leveling or tramming the bed, so it's like the regular stuff. So just starting with the first nozzle, then it's calculating the 16 points. So it also has an auto Z align just to have like um, go through like the minor defects that you have in your build plates it will compensate into your print so here i'm just adding the filament so these are the two basic spools that came with the printer so these are two pla spools one is blue it's a nice color the other one is white so like i've preheated the nozzles then i push the filament through but here you can see like i had an issue with the second extruder when it just went all the way into the back of the extruder without going through the nozzle 
Um, so here I get it right and I can see that I had some green filament left. So I assume the printers were pre-tested before sending to me or I don't know if they do it with any printer, um, but everything is set to go and going well. So here I'm just doing the first print in copy mode, um, just to like do the final uh, Z align. So the, the, you can just add like compensation in your Z axis to have it like nicely print onto the bed. Uh, the first one had some issues, so it was a bit too far off the bed. And here you can see like the first calibration cubes coming off the printer quite well. So now I'm going through a bit more calibration because if you have two uh, extruders, you'll need to do more calibration at when one, because the two extruders are on one gantry, meaning if one has some offsets, it could like knock off your parts if you're too low or if, it, or if you're too high you cannot have like a good bond uh, between the two different filaments being printed so i go through a lot of calibration they have these calibration files on their printer uh, on the sd cards and then i just do some testing till i think i get everything right so i'll go through the modes now so you have single mode so this is like basic 3d printing you can like choose which nozzle you prefer one has a touch sensor the other one has not so normally you would go with the first one and this is the first banshee coming off quite well so for the second mode you have duplicate mode so it's like dual mode or copy mode where you can print two parts at the same time with each extruder so this means that you get two printers for the price of one because they print twice the amount of parts um, in the same amount of time. So these are printed in phase mode, fast mode, spiralized mode, and Cura. Um, so it's just going all the way around on the outline. So these are quite fast prints and easy to do some first testing with this printer. Then you have mirror mode. So it's quite similar to the copy modes. It's just like the name says, it's in mirror. So you can print like if you have a left arm and right arm, if you're into cosplay, and then you have like protective armor for your right hand or left hand. You can print these at the same time on this printer. So keep in mind that you'll have, if you're using lettering or symbols, they will be mirrored as well. So on one side I had matte 2, on the other side it was in, uh, in mirror. So just like the name says. So here I'm just doing like a handle for a bottle cap opener and you can see the results right here. So now for the like the coolest part of this printer is dual mode. So you're able to print in multiple colors or multiple materials. In this video, I'll just go through like different colors. But in the future, I'll do another video about more experimental stuff with different materials being printed. Um, you could use some PVA, for example, water soluble filaments to have like um, impossible printed parts that you can do other ways without having support uh, being trapped into your parts. So here I'm just doing a little cone. I found this one on Thingiverse, so it's an easy one. You can find the files right there and then you just have to slice them. Um, <clears throat> but here you can see like the first problem I had. Uh, I think I had everything well calibrated, but like the second extruder was just a bit too far off um, compared to the, to the first one. So it, to the layers didn't adhere quite well uh, but then it's just a matter of fine tuning you have a knob on the right one just to lower it lower it or raise it a bit more um, so i decided to go a bit more like bigger keep in mind that these are parts that can, that can take quite a good amount of time to print because you have to print with the two heads so they have to preheat they have to switch they have to add a first layer again um, because otherwise like a cone like this in one color on a regular printer you would just have the infill all the way up to the top so here you can see the results so this is a print of about six hours so it takes quite a good amount of time um, but the results are quite satisfying so it's a cool thing to do so now i'm going into a bit more detail as i think that i had the printer calibrated in a good way so i'm doing the frog uh, you can see it a lot on IDEX printers. Um, it's like it's a cool thing to do. It's a long print because the the nozzles or the extruders are changing 
quite a good amount of time during the sprint. Um, like you see a layer around it, so I use um, an ooze shield to try, so it will create like a shell around your part to protect it from uh, oozing or like loose pieces of filament being trapped onto your part. So it's quite good. I can do a bit more of uh, calibration on this, but I was quite happy with uh, this. So now about the slicer. So the slicer is a clone of Cura. So if you're used to, uh, to use Cura, uh, this shouldn't be a problem. They have good tutorials on their uh, YouTube channel as well to explain you a bit more on how to slice multiple colors. So basically you just import um, an object that is separated in multiple objects and then you can pick the nozzle or the extruder for different colors onto your print. So as you can see, so this is like a small statue and it takes 15 hours to print. So it's um, quite time consuming, but the results are satisfying. So now I just wanted to try like the um, maximum dimensions of the printer and here I had some issues. So I'll explain you a bit more about that. So it's all printed in vase mode again. So to be able to print large parts in less than 10 hours, I mostly use uh, vase mode. So everything was done on the left extruder. So in single mode, but here you can see like the filaments is push pulling through the um, runout sensor. As well, this pool is positioned up front of the uh, filament sensor, causing some problems, uh, getting possibilities to get your filaments being wounded up in a wrong way on your spool, causing problems on the print. So here you can see, so these gaps in the parts are slicing errors, it's because the angle was too steep to print in vase mode. But here you can see like the printed dots, it's went out of filament, but there was still filament into the printer. So I pressed resume as it has an um, auto sensor like feeling when there's no more filament in it. But here's a way to bypass it. So I put a strand into the runout sensor. So a, a piece of filament, but then I just go directly from the spool to the extruder. So it's a direct drive. So you're able to do this in this way. Um, now I picked an easier part to print. So this is a rocket. Uh, this was printed in around six hours on a 0 0.2 layer height. And um, it measures about 350 millimeters. So here we can see the print. So it's a good print. There's a bit of um, oozing at some points because I printed it quite fast. Uh, so the slower you go, the better it will be. Um, here are like the issues, but I have this on all my printers. I don't like the flex plates. I prefer my carbon fiber plates. Uh, so I'll add one in the future on this one as well. So here are the cones. So you can still repair or recover them with some CA glue. Why did I print them? I'm going to use them as a standoff while adding some paint or resin on parts. Here I'm able to recover it by just cutting through the layer line that went bad. So this is still a good face for flowers, for example. So here are the negative things about this printer. So this is more like a, a software issue, I think. It's when you push the upper arrow, the bed goes um, in the direction of you if you print the lower um, y arrow it goes to the back of the printer so it's not intuitive so here's the thing i would change so like the run out sensor i really don't like it on the sv04 i prefer it on my uh, ender 3s1 so it's like in the flexible mode so it's pivots in a way so this one is like a rigid uh, run out sensor causing the issues that i had with the filaments being tangled up um, at some moments as well i would change like the position of the spools instead of having them in a horizontal way i would put them in a vertical way so here's the other thing like the the flex bed it's quite sticky so it's difficult to remove parts especially thin parts or thin walled parts like the printed parts in vase mode. It's a direct drive, so I like that, but the problem is it's not an all metal hot end, so this might cause like some limitations with um, filaments and types of things you want to print. 
and then you have a lot of calibration to do so i don't mind doing some calibration i like it i like fine-tuning printers and getting good results but some people might not like this so about the positive things it's two independent extruders so you can print twice as fast you can print twice as much pieces as you want um, you can load different types of filaments so do some exotic crazy stuff the single mode is quite good so it's a good printer on its own uh, but having the advantage of getting a second extruder as well so the like printing on its own it's quite cool to see like it's um, it's like a dance of two extruders the advantage as well here is that you print twice as fast so if, if you're into cosplay or things this is like a cool thing to uh, move faster through your prints the two layers so the two colored printing i see it more like a gimmick in this um, tutorial or video there are way more options like i mentioned with pva water soluble filaments uh, creating some cool stuff um, that can be quite useful in my domain of making like composites molds and things like that so the build volume is a good advantage as well and here you can see the parts so there will be a second video about more exotic more experimental things i'll do with this printer um, so stay tuned uh, for future videos on my youtube channel so if you like this video make sure to like subscribe and leave a comment let me know what you would like to see me do with this printer and i hope to see you guys in the next one thanks for watching